And Shrouded Update, Melodies of the Mire is out now. Let's dig deep into these patch notes. It has a lot of stuff. New area, new content, new features. So the big one, Blackmire, a new area for players level 13 through 15. It's in the corner of Revel Woods, a sub biome with beautiful soaring trees and murky depths. You'll encounter new creatures, few of which will be friendly. To prepare for your journey, make sure your character has a hook and glider equipped. So we're going to need that to get up those big trees. They say if you have a more experienced character, you want to get an appropriate challenge, equip them at around level 15. And you can redo your skill points. I'm not going to be doing that. Okay, so the Blackmire specifically. A new passage has emerged in the far north of Rebelwood, beyond which the mysterious Blackmire waits to be discovered. As an extension of the Riverwood region, Blackmire offers a unique new area for players to explore alongside additional new quests, gameplay challenges, skill points, enemies, music, and much more. The most adventurous Flameborn will be rewarded with unique materials, more building stuff, yay, accessories, and decorations, yay. I'm all about things for making our bases unique. And there are even rumors of another survivor hidden among the sunken ruins of the ancients. Yes, we're getting a new NPC. Here's one I am super excited about, player-based quest progression. This was their most requested feature, and I can tell why. This is going to make it so much easier on our community server for the happy gamers. You have the option to complete the quest individually in multiplayer. All the missed quests are listed in the quest journal. They can be toggled off and on, allowing players to personally complete them with or without their friends. So no more we have this issue of, oh, you did that and I wasn't here, so now I don't get to do it. I know a lot of people have been having to play multiple games, like you have the community server game, and then you have to have an individual game. They say quest participation has been tracked since the release of Hollow Halls. Previous quests will show up as missing and may have to be completed again to display as finished. I'm not entirely sure what that looks like, but I'm going to find out. Musical instruments are here. Yay. You can craft them and play various new musical instruments. You can do it alone or with players. And get this, playing music adds to the rusted buff duration. That's nice. So it's not just for fun. It has a purpose too. And can even be used to replenish it while exploring the world of Embervale. So I wonder if this is as good as putting a fire or better than a fire. Can you do it in places that you couldn't do a fire? Like if there are enemies nearby? I need to look at that. Vanity system. Visual transmogs have been added to the equipment menu. Yay! So basically the way they've handled this is you can change things. You can also like choose to just hide the visibility of your gloves and helmets. So even if you're wearing the same armor, you can look differently. People can see your face without losing the effect of having that armor on. That's cool. Permission settings for servers. Hosts of either peer-to-peer -peer servers or dedicated servers can now set individual passwords for various user groups who then have specific permissions enabled or disabled on that server. This is good because I don't think they really originally recognized the things that were going to be involved in running dedicated servers, especially public dedicated servers. So this gives us a lot more control, which is nice. So the permissions you set include like you can have an admin role. There's like three different categories that you can have. And they cover things like taking items out of containers in the player base, building and removing blocks or props in the player base, terraforming, adding or removing flame altars, upgrading flame altars, and kicking or banning other players. Fortunately, we don't have any issues with stuff on our Happy Gamer server, but I know a lot of servers have, so that'll be very useful. Exciting new weapon type, dual-wielded daggers. A lot of people are excited about this. They say a lot of improvements have been added to each class as part of their ongoing effort to improve combat balancing, and we'll look at more details of that in a second. But for dexterity-based builds and trying to balance it more, they've now introduced these dual-wielded daggers. So not only should they be fun to use, but they should balance that class out more. I mean, the dual-wielded stuff is used against us by the moms all the time. So more about combat and the gameplay. A lot of people have talked about changes that they want in combat, and they say their focus in this update has been to look at their class balancing. 
They want it to be fun and effective for all classes on the battlefield, especially when you're in a group. I don't know. I'm a little suspicious of this. I have a personal bias. Let's look at what they've done for the mage class. They have noticed that there have been some unintentional strong defensive options for the mage class. And so to keep it more in line with other builds, we've had to rein in some of that power with a few changes and ability reworks. Please don't shoot any fireballs at us. I very well might because I love being a powerful mage, but let's see what they say. A new skill has been added to the mage skill tree, Eternal Spark. 20% chance to not consume durability with attacks. Please note that the skills Wand Master and Sting have also swapped places in the skill tree. Okay. The skill Water Aura has been reworked. It now works as a buff, meaning the skill can no longer be stacked on the same target by multiple players. Please keep in mind that multiple players with the aura are still useful in larger groups as they can spread the aura over larger areas. Hmm. So only one of us can use our aura to help someone nearby. We can't both do it if we both have it. Cancel timings with wands have been reworked to increase the commitment to the attack. Before it was possible to almost instantaneously switch between attacking and blocking, which led to mages having significantly more defensive power than intended. We'll have to see how much of a delay it takes in there. The unity skill was buffed from 2% mana regeneration rate to 4%. See, they're not all nerfs. Hmm. <laughs> An infinite mana exploit that used healing spells in the skill blood magic has been fixed. Bunny hopping with wand attacks has been nerfed as it allowed mages to almost completely mitigate damage from enemy melee attack. Bunny hopping with wand attacks? What is that? Whatever it is, I should have been doing it. An issue was fixed with the skill bloodletting, which caused it to spawn orbs with 100% chance on crit instead of the intended 50% chance. The damage that staffs add to the damage dealt calculation is reduced by 50%. This slightly reduces spell damage overall. 50% sounds like a lot. Slightly reduce the damage from wands to offset their overall usefulness. Additional projectiles from the skill Wand Master have reduced damage compared to the main projectile. I could see the Wand Master extra projectiles needing less, but I don't know how I feel about wands having reduced damage. I guess some people will like that that think that mages are OP. Fixed an issue with the skill Terror that caused the stun phase to be longer than the intended 4 second duration. The skill Counter Strike no longer affects dead enemies. Okay, how do you feel about that? Sounds like the mage has been super nerfed and I'm a mage so I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm gonna have to go in the game and see. Warrior gameplay. While we feel that the warrior has good damage and survivability, especially in the early game, we feel that it becomes harder to compete with the damage output of the ranged and magical classes in later stages of the game. That's true. We've worked on making the special attacks more exciting and reliable alongside some fixes. Some of our plans to better support warriors will come in a future update as we need more time to work on them a bit longer and do extensive testing. Okay, so they've made some progress on warriors have more to do, they're saying. A new skill has been added to the center ring of the skill tree, Opportunity. Adds 100% to the multiplier of Merciless Strike and Sneak Attack. A new skill has been added to the warrior skill tree, Finesse. Reduce durability loss with one-handed weapons and daggers. A new skill has been added to the warrior skill tree, Steadfast. Defeating an enemy with a melee weapon restores one durability to that weapon. That's nice. Two-handed weapons now hit enemies more consistently during the regular attack chain. That's good, because I would never want to use them. A new mechanic has been introduced for two-handed weapons. When delaying the attack input, the character performs a different attack chain of overhead strikes. This way, the player can choose between dealing great damage to multiple targets or massive damage to a single target. Interesting. Increase the effectiveness of parry for two-handed weapons. It denoted it. Shields have... Tweaked block and parry values to match the various subcategories. Parrying enemies with shields and wards in the late game now fills their stun bars in the intended way. Good. The damage from the skill bash now scales with the strength attribute and should be more competitive for higher level characters. Increase the base damage for the skill Merciless Strike from 400 to 500. The skill Breach now triggers more reliably. The skill Shockwave now triggers on every parry in addition to the previous trigger of overpowering with attacks into a blocking enemy. 
The special effect block breaker has been added to the skill evasion attack. The attack now fills more of the stun bar blocking enemies. The cancel times for the skill evasion attack now allow the player to start new inputs sooner after the movement, making it less risky to use. The skill jump attack no longer gets stuck in crowds of enemies and instead pushes them slightly to the side. Furthermore, the attack impact could previously be slightly delayed in specific situations and now better matches the timing of the landing. Continuous triggering of the jump attack previously led to unintentionally high survivability against larger groups of enemies. To counter this, the skill now has a slightly longer recovery phase. On the plus side, it fills the stun bar more should enemies try to block it. I don't know what that means. Making it very likely that they offer the opportunity for a merciless strike. Jump attack should feel more dynamic. It allows better air control while maintaining more of the character's jumping inertia. The player no longer always falls straight to the ground. Variability is good. Okay, what about the ranger gameplay? They thought the limited options for areas of effects were too punishing. And they thought there were issues of when it switches to melee combat and so that's why they introduced the two-handed daggers it's to complement the ranged gameplay and it's not meant as a one-to-one -one alternative in power to the sword in the hands of a skilled warrior interesting so i guess maybe it should not be your primary weapon they also introduced new skills for rangers to support this type of dagger gameplay daggers can now be found as loot all over the world damage of dagger skills with dexterity daggers allow for a unique kick attack that specifically fills the stun bar which can be triggered by attacking quickly after a successful parry nice a new skill has been added to the ranger skill tree dagger master increases damage dealt with daggers by 15 percent armors can now have perks to support the dagger gameplay such as the assassin gloves a new type of arrow is now available the magic arrow it is available in the rebel wood tier crafting progression and once equipped will not be consumed upon use but costs a little mana when drawn. The damage is slightly below regular arrows to balance the higher convenience. I like this. It's giving the ranger something similar to what the mage can do. See, I like that. Bringing the ranger up to the mage level. Not, not always bringing the mage down. Just saying, I'm not biased at all. A new skill has been added to the ranger skill tree. Slice and dice increases the damage of the new bow attack by 50% after a dagger crit. The first version of Explosive Arrows is now available in the crafting tier of the Rebel Wood, providing early access to splash damage. Explosive Arrows, crafting time, and ingredient costs have been reduced. Nice. A new upgrade skill has been added to the Ranger skill tree that allows the player to choose to trigger special arrows such as the Explosive Arrow in the Multi-Shot skill. Multi-Shot trigger all arrows, including special arrows, can trigger Multi-Shot now. But note that this does consume additional arrows from the backpack. A new skill has been added to the ranger skill tree, multi-shot spread, adds a 25% chance to spawn an additional projectile to the flurry of arrows from the multi-shot skill. This does not get subtracted from the backpack. I would think not. The functionality of the stun arrow has been reworked. Instead of stunning an enemy directly, the stun arrow now increases the stun bar similar to a parry or attacking into a blocking enemy. Together with that, more enemies can now be stunned and more enemies offer the merciless strike opportunity when stunned. The amount added to the stun bar with stun arrows depends on the dexterity attribute. I don't know how I feel about that. What do you think? Bosses are stunned for a little longer than before. Generally, bosses are still very resistant to stuns. That makes sense. Okay, player progression and equipment. Completing quests now rewards with XP. To compensate for XP from quests in additional areas in the Rebel Wood, the XP needed for level ups has been adjusted accordingly. Hmm. Meat based food in the Kindle Waste tier has duration values that are better aligned to other cooked food in this tier. Clean bandages now also remove the poison status. That's nice because clean bandages didn't, I didn't really see the point of them a whole lot. They need something extra. The buff from bandages now expires when the player receives damage as intended. Bows now lose durability as intended. Sorry, everyone. Ugh. It's fine. It's fine. It makes sense. Armor perks that give a damage bonus for the skill Merciless Strike now give a significantly higher bonus on late game equipment. Rogue Armor for the Warrior now features a bonus for the skill Merciless Strike instead of a bonus for Sneak Attack. Improved stats for the Radiant Paladin Helmet and Glove items. 
trying to remember if I was thinking that didn't really have enough. The explosive powder ball neck can now correctly be crafted. Nice. A new type of equipment can now be found in the world. Vanity outfits. Vanity outfits don't have gameplay stats, but can be equipped in the vanity slots to override the visuals of the equipped armor. Yay! We can still feel buff, but look different ways. You can see this in their video of people playing musical instruments too. Metal Star Maces can now drop in better quality than common. The opportunity damage perk on items has been replaced by merciless strike damage and sneak attack damage perks and some little visual things. Okay, building and farming. Increase the speed of the planting and harvesting actions to allow faster and smoother interaction with plants. Remove saffron as an ingredient of recipes in the Nomad Highlands crafting tiers. It does not become available until the Kindle Waste. That's good. Fix several minor issues with recipes for furniture and decorative props. Uh, some little corrections here and there. And yucca palm seedlings now require yucca fruit to craft, which makes sense. Okay, game world and enemies. The VUCA? How do you say it? VUCA? The VUCA faction has been expanded. The shamans can now block a player's melee attacks. The healer's behavior has been reworked. He's more efficient in following and healing his companions. The soldiers are now faster and more difficult to parry. The damage of the poison attack from scavenger matrons has been reworked to limit the risk of killing players in melee range with one hit. They are intense. Armored scavenger enemies and shielded fell soldiers now have their stamina reduced by 20%, leading to their stun bar filling up faster and thus more earlier opportunities for the merciless strike. They say enemy encounters have been updated and improved in many areas of the world. Pillars of Creation received an overhaul. There are more rewards to discover there and additional enemies. The region around Nomad Highlands Elixir Well received a major update. Towns of Fort Kelvin, Hillock, and Ferndale have received a major overhaul. Fix some issue with trains and stuff around the world. Benches now offer more spaces to sit on. That's nice. More equipment repair anvils in larger settlements and towns. Improve situations where debuffs could be activated when standing near or jumping over dangerous terrain, like lava, even if the character's feet weren't touching it. That's a good one. When moving through mud, the character can now sink in further than before. That's going to be entertaining. Okay, user interface. In the character menu, each equipment slot now has an additional slot for a vanity override. Helmets and gloves can now be hidden. This is a huge one right here. By default, players are now shown with their character names instead of the Steam account name. This can be switched on and off in settings. Thank goodness. I don't think I've ever seen a game do that before where it shows your Steam name instead of your character name. That was very unsettling for some people. I am really glad they finally got that fixed. And I hope that's the player settings, not the server settings where that setting is at. Tombstones now show the name of the fallen player. Very helpful. Flame altars can now be renamed. Yay! Map markers can now be filtered in the world map. Oh, please note these settings affect all your characters and worlds, but can be changed at any point. Why? That seems odd. When moving several items from your chest or other containers to the backpack, the game will no longer add items to the action bar by default. The state of durability of weapons is now displayed in the details menu. Improve the display of damage bonus to merciless strike on weapons. Have some different little UI fixes. Here's one I like. Fix cases where the new dot didn't disappear from armor items even after, even after viewing them. And then miscellaneous. Let's see if there's any good ones. There is. The range for gifting items to other players has been increased to 50 meters. That's nice. Performance for servers has been improved for larger groups of players. And Enshrouded has been further optimized for the Steam Deck. Lots of stuff here. Lots of good stuff. Some stuff I'm not sure about. Some stuff I need to check out. Overall, I am super excited. And I'm getting ready to jump into this game. Until next time, happy gaming.